Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Philippi, and welcome back to the Minnesotan Sports Podcast. And we have another exciting episode of predictions for you today. And it just, it seems like time has really flown by as we go into uh, this season of week 14 already. Um, it seems like just yesterday that we were counting down the days until the season started and, you know, the initial excitement of the first few Vikings games, um, and all of a sudden, um, the Vikings could potentially wrap up the division by this week. Um, it should be a good couple of matchups within the NFC for seeding. So a lot of really exciting stuff going on right now. Um, before I start with the predictions, I just want to really quick recap the current playoff picture as it stands right now, because these games are going to become increasingly more important for seeding and how teams are going to be uh, standing as far as their divisions and everything going into the next few weeks. So we'll just go over this real quick. So on the AFC side, Buffalo is in the number one seed, um, but they are they're honestly in the toughest division in the in the uh, for sure in the AFC right now with the uh, AFC East comprising of the eight and four Miami Dolphins as well, um, the New York Jets seven and five. So that'll be an important matchup this week. Um, and then the uh, the Patriots aren't looking as good right now, but still, to have all your all your all the teams in your division playing that well is really impressive. Um, so then we have the second seed, Kansas City, uh, and then the third seed, Baltimore. Um, Baltimore dealing with uh, Lamar's injury. So Huntley, it'll be interesting to see how he does. Um, I'll factor that into my predictions. And then we have the four seed, Tennessee, You know, the, currently at 7-5 and five and winning. Um, winning the easiest, for sure, AFC North, the easiest uh, division in the league. Um, and so, you know, there's, you know, who, who knows how good they are right now. I'll do kind of a breakdown. Um, but then Seattle at fifth seed um, could easily jump ahead of Baltimore by the end of the season. Both of them tied at eight and four. Uh, Miami at eight and four, like I said, and the Jets at the seventh seed. So six and seven are both AFC East. Um, should be a lot of great matchups there. And then NFC, First seed is Philadelphia at 11 and 1, obviously. Then we got our very own Minnesota Vikings at the second seed. Um, third seed, San Francisco 49ers. Um, and that could, I, th- I definitely think that's going to drop. I do think that, that the Seahawks have a great potential to uh, um, take this, the division after the uh, injury to Garoppolo, but you never know uh, with Purdy in. He looks pretty good. Um, the Tampa Bay Bucks, <laughs> again. It's possible that the uh, NFC South is almost as bad as the AFC North, but it's not quite as bad, but um, easy division for the Bucs. Uh, and then Dallas at the fifth seed. I think they're the second best team in the league right now, or at least the second best team in the NFC, um, but they're at the fifth seed because of their division. Um, and then we have the uh, Giants at six and Seattle at seven. It's crazy to think that there's currently three um, NFC uh East teams in the playoff picture right now, and three teams that are looking like some of the best in the NFC. Um, it's just a complete turnaround from, like, for example, 2020 when I think it was wasn't it six and nine, or excuse me, six and ten, or seven and nine. The Commanders were when they won the division that year. Um, but anyway, that's enough of me talking about the NFC least. Um, this year they're actually looking pretty good. So we're gonna go into these scores. And like we do every single week, I'm going to write them all down and I'm going to hold myself to them. I'm going to grade myself and then it, I'll reveal it at the end of the season how well I did. Um, so it's going to be kind of a drum roll anticipation moment for you to see how well I actually did at predicting these. Unless you're keeping track of it at home, which I don't know why you would. But if you do, I'm a little bit flattered by that. So uh, we're going to go through all these. Um, and I'm not sure if the Vikings Lions breakdown will be out yet at this point. Um, but I'll still make the initial prediction here, um, and then I'll break it down more in depth, um, which it, it'll either come out to the same day or the next day on Friday. So we'll start with the uh, Thursday night game, Raiders and, and Rams. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because it's just both of these teams are out of the race, and they're looking, it's like a horse race for who's worse. Um, I do think the Raiders will win this one, though. The Rams have just been looking awful, and now with Matthew Stafford out, it's just everything's hitting the fan now um and i'm gonna mute um the espn ads before they play like they do in every single video on accident um yeah i think Carr and his connection with Devonte adams 
um, which I've been mentioning has been great to see because I wanted the Adams to do as well as he could when he left the Packers because Packers fans are missing him like crazy right now, and I love that. Um, but Josh Jacobs is all of a sudden playing phenomenally, and you always knew he had that in the tank. It's just he's been incredibly inconsistent with that. Um, if he can continue to play well against the Rams, it, it should be even easier for the Raiders to win this one. But yeah, mostly the connection with Adams and Carr in the last few weeks, I think they're kind of ramping up. Um, not enough where I think they're going to finish above 500 or anything like that. Um, but I do think that the Raiders should win this one. Um, so I'll go ahead and put them as the first victors of the week. Um, in a game that makes me a little bit fine that I don't have NFL, or uh, excuse me, not NFL Network anymore. Um, but uh, now that I don't have Amazon Prime, um, I'm kind of fine with that when games like this come on because it's just a bad game. Um, the Vikings at Lions, um, this is one where I could, it's difficult because this is the, exactly the game that the, the Vikings would lose. Going up against the Lions, the Lions are playing their best football that they have in, in a few years. Vikings lost at the Lions last week or last year. That was a different team, obviously. Um, but coming off of an emo, another emotional win in the last seconds, I want to pick the Lions, but these are the, the games that, you know, the Vikings have had so many opportunities to lose trap games this year, and they get so close every single time, but they just find a way to stick it out. And this Lions offense is really going to test the Vikings. I think this is going to be a total shootout. And again, I'll deal t detail that more when I do a full breakdown of it, um, and that'll come out soon. Um, but I'm going to go with the Vikings here because these they just have won these games. There's not really a good explanation for it, um, but the Vikings are 4-1 in away games. Um, and against teams they should win against, they've gotten the win. And, you know, Vikings have been, like I said, kind of fallen captive to the those kinds of games, the trap games in recent years, but not this year. So it's hard to not go for the Lions with a game where they have so much momentum, um, but I still got to go with the Vikings here based on how the season's gone. Jets and Bills, um, this is a game where I could easily pick the Jets, um, especially since the Jets beat the Bills last time they played each other. Um, but I got to go with the Bills here. I understand Von Miller is lost for the season. That's a huge blow for them. Um, but I still think that offensively, they're one of the best teams in the league. Um, and they still have plenty of weapons on defense, too. They're, they're definitely injury-ridden. Um, and I think that's going to be an issue in the later rounds of the playoffs. Um, but right now, I think they should be able to beat the Jets. Um, if the, I mean, the, really, the Jets are one good quarterback away from being a serious threat in, in the league. Uh, their their defense is the next level, um, but you know they're not going to get enough done with Mike White to to beat the Bills in my opinion. Browns at Bengals in, in a game where it felt like the Browns did so many awful things and and did everything wrong, they still were able to beat the Texans handily because it's the Texans. Um, but I don't think they're going to get as lucky against the Bengals. Um, the fact that the line is negative five point five is honestly a little insulting. The way that. Burrow and the, this Bengals offense has been playing in, in recent weeks, um, especially now with D Jamar Chase back. I think the Bengals should easily get this win, uh, mark that one down, and especially considering the fact that the Bengals can't just lie down and, and coast at all at this point because they are tied with the Ravens for the division. And with Lamar Jackson hurt, these next couple, it's possible he's out anywhere between one and four weeks. So in the one to four weeks that he's out, the Bengals need to pounce and win every game they can so that if if the Ravens lose in, in the absence of Lamar Jackson, they can jump ahead and uh, try and take this AFC North as they currently lead it right now um, by a half game. Um, so no room for error for the, the Bengals if they want this division, and I think they win a big game. Cowboys are Texans. Cowboys will absolutely destroy the Texans. I'm not even going to really explain that one because I think everyone should know. And anyone who thinks um, that, or excuse me, I'm sorry, I, I do believe that the Ravens still lead the uh, AFC North. See, I, I, um, I've i been putting in these things for the, it's called the NFL playoff machine. And I was like, okay, I'll just pick the teams and then I can take a picture of it so I know which ones I picked. But then I forgot that when you click a team, it like changes the playoff picture to what you've said. So the the Bengals and 
Ravens are both eight and four. I just I thought that it was different because of what I, I'm stupid anyway. So yeah, I'm not gonna look at that anymore. Anyway, the very next p- prediction that we have, it looks like it's the Jaguars and the Titans, and this is one I'm really tempted to have as the upset of the week. Looking forward, I don't see a lot of them that I th- I think I really believe in enough. Um, I could go. Uh, no, I, I think this is going to be the one. I'm going to go Jaguars over Titans for the upset of the week. And my friend RJ um, that lives in Tennessee is not going to like that. Um, but, you know, I, I think that the Titans can get down on themselves really easily in games. Um, and they have a decent defense. But I've been saying it every single week. When you take away Derrick Henry, that team doesn't have anything. And you saw that when they played last week. They don't have a thing when you take away Derrick Henry. The Eagles took Derrick Henry away last week, and they absolutely destroyed the Titans. And I think if if there's any team, um, or if there's any team the Jaguars can beat in upset, it's the Titans because, you know, if they can just take away that run, they can get this team uncomfortable. And if there's any upset that's going to happen this week, I think it's most likely that that's the game. So lock it down. That's my official upset of the week. Um, if you're new, I do that every single week. I pick one upset. That's like a major upset to try and get right. Eagles at Giants. And now this is, I don't believe the Vikings will overtake the Eagles for the one seed because the Eagles would have to l- win at least or lose at least two games for that to happen. And the Vikings would have to win out, which I think is unlikely. Um but if the Vikings were to somehow get into the first seed, this is one of the games the Eagles would definitely have to lose. That being said, I don't think they're going to do it. Um, I think the Giants don't quite have the formula to match up with the Eagles. I think that the Giants have been really riding with Saquon Barkley and also kind of relying on Daniel Jones's running ability. And the run game is not something that you want to have as your strong suit against the Eagles because the Eagles can tear that apart, especially with the run defense they just got. Um, I don't think the Giants have the pieces to, to beat this team, and so I'm going to go and uh, pick the Eagles. Um, and I think that would effectively, if, if the Eagles beat the Giants here, I think that would effectively end the Vikings' chances of a two of the one seed. Um, not officially, but pretty much effectively. Uh, Ravens at Steelers. I think this game will be a lot closer than you'd think, um, especially with Tyler Huntley in there. You know, he's going to be kind of, I mean, this is a guy that's not a, a stranger to these situations um, just because um, he has filled in for Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has been kind of an injury-prone quarterback. We saw him a little bit last year um, and even the year before that. In my opinion, he's at least a top three backup quarterback in this league. And honestly, I think there's some teams in the league right now uh, where he could play and be the best quarterback on that team. Um, I can name a few, like the Rams, um, for example, but and the and the Texans as well. Um, and but still, I think that with hit, this being his first game of the season, I think that he's going to be kind of rusty, kind of figuring out things. With uh, you always have new guys year to year that if you're coming in for the first time, it's going to be difficult to adjust. I still do think they're going to win, though. I think it'll be a close one. But I think the Ravens should be able to pull that one out. And now we're moving on to the Chiefs at the Broncos. The Chiefs should win this game very handily. Um, The Broncos continue to just continue. I mean, they're bad. What else can I say? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is not matched up to to his potential at all. Um, And the the Broncos are going to have to hope that he has a huge turnaround moment next season. um, Because they're paying him a lot of money to... At the, at, at the current moment, do very little. Um, so, yeah, easy win for Kansas City. Uh, I don't think I need to say much more. Buccaneers at 49ers. This should be a really good game. And I, th- I, th- I don't know if it would be a good game a few weeks ago with the 49ers starting to play really well. The Buccaneers just kind of shooting themselves in the foot. But now Tom Brady had a really good comeback win against the Saints. Um, it's always a good game when you have Tom Brady in there and the Buccaneers have been kind of a boring team this year, but they've still gone six and six. Um, they're going to be fighting for, uh, one more win because even with the NFC South as bad as it is, six and six has you a little bit nervous, um, because some teams could still potentially come up and try and overtake you. 
So they're going to be trying really hard to win this one. And the 49ers now, with Brock Purdy, the, the playing field between the Bucks and the 49ers has really leveled. So I think this will be a really close game. And uh, I think Purdy's going to come into this game with some confidence because he played pretty well in that, in that game uh, last week after uh, Garoppolo uh, went out. Um, but I'm going to say the Buccaneers win this one because the 49ers, I think, are going to have to think about a lot of things in, in terms of how they're going to change their offense to facilitate a, uh, a quarterback that was picked as Mr. Irrelevant in this year's draft. Um, it's just, you know, people see like one half or more of a quarterback's performance when they come in as like a rookie or filling in for an injury and they think, oh man, this guy's really good. You know, he played really well in this last half. All of a sudden, I think, you know, this team can go far with him. I, I need to see a lot more before I think that Brock Purdy is going to lead the 49ers on some deep playoff run. I don't even think that they're going to uh, end up winning the NFC West by the end of the season. Um, so I'm going to go with the Bucks over them. And speaking of the uh, NFC West, Panthers at Seahawks. Seahawks trying to overtake that spot with uh, this really unfortunate situation for the 49ers. And Panthers have not won a game all season away. So five of their eight losses have come against um, uh, home teams. And the Seahawks, I think, are trying to... Um, they had that a couple rough weeks. They bounced back with a nice win against the Rams. Uh, they did have to have a comeback win, uh, but just kind of shows Geno's clutch gene a little bit, and they had to have a win like that at some point. I think the Seahawks win this one. Um, the Panthers... Who even knows who they're going to put in at quarterback? Um, it could be Baker Mayfield, or excuse me, not Baker Mayfield. It could be P.J. Walker. Who knows uh, at this point? So I'm just going to go with the uh, the Seahawks. Not a very difficult decision there, um, and uh, a good situation for them now uh, as the season ramps to a close. Dolphins at Chargers. This is the point where I think that the Chargers at 6-6, six and six, are either going to have a resurgence and try and make a push for the playoffs, or they're just going to completely nosedive. And against the Dolphins, I think a nosedive might be kind of in the in the making. Uh, the 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 Chargers had so much hope going into the season, but the same way it seems every single year for this LA Chargers team, they just come into it with potential. They kind of crash to the the, the floor after winning a few good games, and people start hyping them up. They get a bunch of injuries, and they just kind of flop uh, and can't get back up by the end of the season. The Dolphins should win this one. I think uh, Tyree Kill is a good matchup for this team, um, and I think Tua has been playing fantastically. So 3.5 line for Miami. It should be a little more than that, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, I think the, the Miami Dolphins should take that one. And then an interesting Monday night matchup between two teams that have just been impossible to read all season long, the Patriots at the Cardinals. The Patriots can come in one week and play really well, and I understand it, it was the Vikings' defense, so Mac Jones, you know, it makes sense that he looked that good against the Vikings' defense. Um, but one week they can come in looking really good on both sides of the ball, and the other week they can only put up seven points and, and lose by a lot. And then on the Cardinals' side, Kyler Murray has been playing better than I think people think. It's just that he hasn't led the team well enough. You know, he hasn't been enough of an X factor to overcome a lot of the challenges this team has faced. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins has definitely been a big factor for this team. the the big The big major con- surprise for this team is that they're one in six at home. They're four and eight and one in six at home. So they ha- they're having a lot of trouble performing in front of their home crowd. Um, Patriots. I think the Patriots win this game. I think that. You know, Bill Belichick is really good at conditioning his team to come up in the big moments when their backs are against the wall. They're currently, you know, in the, I believe they're in the eighth spot, so they're just barely out of the playoff picture, um, if I remember correctly. Um, But I think that the Patriots are going to understand this is a game that they really need to win to stay in their race uh, with the AFC kind of pulling away a little bit. Um... The Jets being being seven and five going into this week, it's important for them to keep winning. So, a lot of good matchups, and I'm really excited to kind of go over what happens after the week's over. Uh, and again, I can't wait to kind of break down in depth the Vikings Lions game. You'll see that one soon. You might even see that one before this video comes out. I'm not going to tell the future because who knows what's going to happen. 
um, what I decide to do. But thanks so much for watching this one. Um, just a few reminders. Please make sure that you follow me on Instagram. It's the Minnesotan uh, Sports Podcast on there. Um, I'll put that in the description of this video if I can remember to do that because sometimes I don't. Also, just a quick reminder that uh, this podcast is also on Spotify and on the host platform Anchor. Uh, so if you want to listen to this podcast on your drive to work, if you don't necessarily want to try and load it on YouTube, because I understand sometimes when your Wi-Fi is bad, all that, or if you want to download it for a long trip, anything you want to do, um, you can go look for that on Spotify, the same name, and I'll also link that in this description. So make sure you do all that and follow me. I am also on TikTok too. I don't post on that very often, um, but give me a follow on that too if you want to. So thanks so much. It's going to be a great week. And I'll see you on the flip side.